Hello and welcome back to Broadside Gaming with me, Zerg. And you know what today is? It's patch day for Dark Tide. So without further adieu, crack on, shall we? So this patch has been long awaited, and we're going to go through everything that they've given us. So uh, this is patch ten, rejects unite. So it's gone live now, and added a few features so let's go through it this is mostly going to be um more of a podcast than a gameplay vid guys so feel free to look at other stuff i will be showing a few things but i'll give you a shout when i'm doing that so we'll start with the new features uh archive and sikrax it's a new map we're sending you into the hab zone hl 1924 throw inside to break into the archive and sikrax so it's a new map and we're going to be uh, deleting data it seems they have now added... Oh, they've added a Chaos Spawn. A favourite from Vermintide 2. I say a favourite, it was a dick. And the Chaos Spawn is a fourth monstrosity. It's a frenzy monstrosity, so it's not going to be as tough as the Beast of as the Plague Ogre or the Beast of Nurgle, but it's going to be faster. Uh, so basically, it's going to be the spawn from Vermintide 2. Pretty much the same attack patterns. Faster damage, it disables you like a mutant. And yeah, it's going to be a bit annoying. And, oh, there is a community event that they, they were talking about. So let's get into what that is actually going to be. Uh, we will also be kicking off our first of three community events in which the community will need to complete challenges in order to unlock new rewards. You'll be able to see any progress made towards each challenge on the website and on the Dark Tide launcher. Once a goal has been hit, then the reward will be available to all players. The first two rewards are a tattoo and a helmet. And they'll be redeemable through the Dark Tide account dashboard, similar to the Warhammer 40,000 Fest Cosmetics. Uh, Ascension Rise of 31 will reward for the third challenge will be complete 900,000 missions. Playing on a higher difficulty will help each will help you reach the goal faster. With Sedition providing a one times bonus, Uprising a two times, Malice 3, Heresy 4, and Damnation 5. To any points required, once the goal has been reached, the mission will be unlocked for all players. There, so yeah, it's all right. It's like um, Planet Side Two kind of um, dealio. You know, everyone pitches in and it unlocks stuff. Quite cool. I like it. Uh, right, uh, the bigger thing: Octave Cosmetics. I know everyone likes a good fashion tide. The commissary has now been reopened, so that's what we're looking at right now. Is the commissary? This is where the shop used to be. Uh, you can now purchase full sets directly or buy individual item. Each set consists of an upper, lower and a helmet you know, in some cases a helmet uh, they've introduced rarity levels so let's have a look at that now showing that on screen for people that pay attention so as you can see you got your refine redeemed anointed exalted and transcendent and there's sets for oh they're quite nice oh I do like those I like that uh, there's some new backpacks as well. And you can look at all the sets on the same character. So we'll have a quick look at some of the veteran stuff over here as well. Not bad looking. Not bad at all. Quite expensive. But, you know, it's something to work towards. Uh, do do. do. A pricing scheme has been created for the sale of Optive Cosmetics items available in the commissary. The prices of the items are determined by two factors, the rarity of uh, of it and the tier level in the set. Items are often created in sets together, which evolve over five times to form five different tiers. Mm, same looking armor, different color scheme, I think that's what they mean. And then there's a huge list of, I'm not going to name off every single fucking item. If you want to have a look at them, they are all in the commissary for you to peruse at your leisure. You can buy them all separately, or you can buy them in piecemeal like this. So if you just want a little bit of something and mix and match. Just have a look at the zealot stuff over here as well. Oh, that's very pretty. I like the blue. The blue's nice. 
So they've added white sets. Uh, they're following very closely to the Vermintide sort of progression path of, you know, outfits. So you originally get your, your blue, then your red, then your black, and the white one was the last one for the Chaos Wastes, which is, you know, kind of this. But they are all very, very expensive, so get saving. And there's a big old line of it. Uh, okay, user interface. The commissary has now been a new user interface of browsing cosmetics within the store. Uh, you can now browse the classes all at once, which we've been over. All the cosmetics are previewed by default and good. Further preview easy on your on your operative if difficult applicable to do so. Okay, so you just press Q to show on operative. There's my operative, and it just, you know, swaps about. Oh, no, it gets rid of his beard. That's a shame. Nice outfit, though. I do like the white one. Uh, Commodore's Vestures. New items. The Commodore's Vestures will have new items appear in the store for sale. These items will be available starting from May 30th at 10 o'clock UTC. After the 30th of May, the Commodore's Vestures will slowly shift back to its intended cadence of being updated every two weeks on a Friday. The next rotation will be on June 16th. So this is the pay shop. So they've, they're adding in the uh, buyable cosmetics, which, you know, I don't have a problem with. It's a cosmetic. If you want to buy it, buy it. If you don't, don't. You know, is what it is. Uh, all available cosmetics items can be earned for auto dockets or unlocked via penances have been made visible. So basically everything you can earn via money or penances is now visible in the uh, cosmetics section. So I can go, oh, I haven't collected that. And you can just look through them. Updates and tweaks. Change the hunting grounds to spawn one to two waves instead of up to seven waves on dam damnation, with bigger waves and a few normal pox sounds added on heresy and damnation. Dev notes: Current hunting grounds have a tendency to slow down the pacing too much and take too long to clear. This tweak should make waves harder while making the triggered events not take as long. So it's going to be more intense but quicker. Uh, we've tuned the amount of health, the speed of the healing, and the cost from the healing pool to heal a downed player from a deployed medical crate. Oh, reduced medical crate healing speed and cost towards down players. Speed from 100% to 10%, cost 10 to 30. Okay. The intention is that down players don't drain the entire medical pack in seconds so that alive players can get some healing. Okay, that makes sense. That's a pretty good change. While also making it so that down players are bleeding out for longer giving a longer time when if the teammates to heal them okay so if you're downed it will still heal you but it won't drain the shit out of the medical crate so that people who are alive actually get some healing off of it uh there are an assortment of bug fixes animation sound effects video effects I'm not gonna go through those because i don't care gameplay fixed a bug where you could circumvent the fire rate reduction on ranged weapons if using if used while sprinting fixed an issue that could occur while vaulting in enclosed spaces penances apparently they fixed it just says penances fixed issues where bringing the hunt penance would would be triggered by using the rumbler okay i'll have to update that video you can no longer complete bring the hurt on the ogryn with the rumbler so this is your first warning you can't do it they've now it has been patched so i will update that video at some point and let everyone know Fixed issues where the pence, one in the chamber, could not progress higher than the previous version's requirement of five. And there's just some more UI fixes and shit. When switching inputs between controller, don't care. Engine updated, other tweaks and changes. A new option under the interface has been added that will disable the 3D running of operative portraits for the strike team HUD. Okay. Yeah, so this is mostly... The event, which is unlocking the new map, a new map. I don't think this is updated yet at the time of recording. It does not look like it has, no. Okay, so at the time of recording, the Commodore's uh, Ventures is not updated, but there is a weird bug I will point out. 
I don't know if this is intended. I haven't seen anything in the patch notes. Weapons no longer have a colour on them. So you actually have to look to see if it's transcendent or not. See? Transcendent, 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 exalted, exalted, transcendent. And, um, yeah, it's quite annoying. And it's the same in the shop as well. There's no... The weapons aren't colour-coded anymore. So I'm assuming this is a bug. But yeah, slightly annoying bug, and I think it's the same. Yeah, it's the same with the inventory as well. Everything has lost its color. Eh, you know, they'll fix it at some point. Yeah, so that's uh, that's today's drop. A new mission, some challenges, and a mission to unlock after everyone's sort of contributed a bit, and some outfits. I would have liked to have seen some more weapons, but you know, they're doing stuff. They're fixing things. We're in a better position now than we were six months ago. So, you know, it's all gravy. But yeah, that is the um, that is the patch Rejects Unite, folks. So, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, like, subscribe, hit the little bell for notifications. There is always more Dark Tide content coming out. And until next time, take it easy, and I'll see you later.